Hey everyone, today I am going to show you how I got this look, this simplified, elegant, sophisticated look with not a lot of products. Uh, now, again, it's not five products, it's more than that, but it's the kind of thing that you can throw together with like basics that you carry in your purse, or if you have a very small collection of makeup and you have like one foundation, one red lipstick, one black eyeliner, one eyeshadow that you use every day that frankly is a neutral, not very different than your skin color. Uh, you have a bronzer, but that's about it. This is the kind of look that you can put together relatively quickly and go from working all day and then going out and if you feel like you've got a look that goes with your outfit, that feels very confident, very elegant, and it doesn't take that long. Now, through the video, it's gonna take me a little longer to show it to you because I'm trying to go through it slowly, but I promise it's not something that's incredibly complicated to achieve. So let's go ahead and see how I did this. The secret to this look, or at least my opinion, the secret to this look, is simplicity. So part of it is you need a really good canvas. You need a really good base. So I always use, like to use moisturizer or, or some type of good primer. So I'm going to use the Labeja's. This is Chanel. This is the Frosty White. Back in the day when I did this look, I didn't use a primer. It's also younger, but... I would say I did always use like a really good moisturizer, the first step. And the reason I say that is that the trick to this for making it look sophisticated, in my opinion, again, since I'm the one doing the look, is that you want the standout piece of the look to be the red lip and the smoky eye. But the smoky eye, again, the way I do it is it's not over the top. It's very simple. It's very elegant. The red lip is really the showstopper. The red lip is really the thing that everybody pays attention to. And when I do it right, <laughs> that works out perfectly. When I do it wrong, then the eye competes with the lip and that's never good. I also would recommend if you're dry or skinned like I am to use something like a glowy foundation or glowier foundation because the lipstick when I do a red lip, I always do a matte velvet type of red lip. I do not do a glossy red lip because I am one of those people that if I wear red on my lips, maybe this is one of the reasons I don't wear red a lot, I manage to get it everywhere. I manage to get it on my shirt. I, I don't know how I do this, but I do. I don't do a glossy lip. I just don't. It's something that's, you know, not transfer proof, but it, it's not going to be like easy to, to transfer. I think it's because I talk with my hands. If, if you haven't noticed, if you've watched me before, you've noticed I, I do talk with my hands and I tend to like, and so I think what happens is at some point there are like voluminous things or something and it gets in my lip. Maybe I should just wear tighter clothing when I wear red. I don't know, but uh, that's unlikely to happen because I tend not to wear very tight clothing. That's all to say, I would recommend a glowier foundation because the lip is going to be a matte lip or a velvet lip or something like that. And so if you're somebody who has dry skin like I do and you go with a matte foundation and a matte lip, it can I don't want to say it'll age you. The thing about youth, the thing about looking young, when you start to really get into it about like why people look young and why somebody looks older, a lot of it has to do with collagen. A lot of it has to do with placement of fat, frankly, under your skin, your bone structure. But then there's this, it, it's a quality that it's really hard to pinpoint, but there's something about being younger where your skin looks dewy. And it's not even dewiness, it's just this healthy glow that your skin has when you're younger and it's very difficult to replicate and makeup and skincare have been trying for a very long time. If you're an older person and you're trying to do this look and you have a very matte lip and you have dry skin, all I would say is that it, it can make you look a little bit older because it dries, everything looks a little bit drier. So I'll just go with a, a glowier foundation. Not dewy, this new foundation by Makeup Forever, this is the HD Skin Hydro Glow by the way, is excellent. I really like this foundation. I've 
been wearing it. I wore it on my Las Vegas trip. And okay, second thing to mention, your brows are very important for this look because there's not a lot of makeup on your face and because you have, and we'll put the bronzer on in a second, but because you have a, I'm looking for the, the best way, like a color story here, because it's all basically beiges and browns and then the red lip. And yes, you've got black eyeliner, but that's not the point. <laughs> is you want to frame your face. You want to make sure that your eyebrows are well positioned. All right, now the bronzer. I obviously go in with a cool toned bronzer. This is my Terra. This is my Terra that I found that was really old and I'm using it up because it's really good. And two things I would say, placement of bronzer, contour bronzer is based on what you're looking for and your face shape. I am trying to make my face look a little less round. And I'm doing like a a diamond so that my face looks more like a diamond. And I'll show you what I mean by that in the middle. So you want the highlight to be here. Everything else is the contour slash bronzer. So I'm gonna go no blush for this look, just bronzer into the hairline. Now, of course, I have all these wispies. If I was actually going out, I would plaster these wispies down with some type of gel or clear mascara. So you can see right now it looks like pretty, not stark, but it's got a, you might not know the video, but Addicted to Love, that song, there's a bunch of women with their hair slipped back and playing musical instruments. I don't think they were actually playing. That's the look you got going right now. If you don't know what that video is, go look it up. All right, so then I do a little contouring here. I try not to do too much. And I know people who like, would always tell you like contour under your neck and your chin. The problem is if you do that and you're very pale, it's gonna look weird because everybody's gonna see your neck and they're gonna be like, why do you have this brown spot on? So do it carefully, like, you know, blend it a little bit. And if people are gonna see your ears, make sure you just dust on a little bit of powder there. I let that sit and see how it sinks in because even though at the moment it looks a little stark as anything, powder, bronzer, blush, wait five, 10 minutes, you'll notice that like sinks into the skin. And if it looks too harsh or it doesn't look like it's blended as well, I will go back in with the foundation brush and blend it out or I'll take the brush and do it. Just depends on how I feel about like where the look is and frankly, how dramatic I wanna make it. Cause if you're going into a dark nightclub, you want to make it more dramatic. I was in a dark nightclub in Vegas. <sighs> when I do my Vegas videos, guys are gonna laugh. Never again, never again. My friends drag me there. I'm not, it has nothing to do with my age. It has to do with just me as a person. I, I cannot make it, can't do it. Uh, take a big wide brush. This shade is called Malt. This is by MAC. And Malt is exactly what it sounds like. It's the color of Malt. It is a grayish, <laughs> grayish mushroom. It, it doesn't really look like anything on me. If you see that, it's like the color of my skin, but a little bit of a shade. And basically you do that with it. So it's, it almost looks like there's nothing on your eyelid, but there's something. So it gives it definition. It gives it a little bit of, shape and you just make sure that's covering your entire eyelid and then you can put it up into the brow a little bit lighter than I'm putting it on the. Now, as I said in my intro, I promised this would be a look for someone that, for anyone, frankly, but also for someone who doesn't have a large collection, who has a red lipstick, a bronzer, maybe a primer, <laughs> one foundation and some type of eyeshadow that they use every day to go to work. That really is a quote neutral and very simple. So let's just say you don't even, you don't have this shade that's just like a little bit deeper than your skin tone. You just have a, a basic brown. That's fine too. Just take a really wispy brush and brush it all over the, the lid. You can, there's a lot you can do to make something look lighter or deeper depending on what you need to do. So now I'm just gonna take this exact same shade. I'm not doing anything. I'm just, going back and forth in the crease with the same shade, but just to make it a little bit deeper in the crease. Next, 
liner. This is a new one. This was sent to me by a company called, and this is the first time I'm trying it, so hopefully it will work out. But it's a black coal liner, so I figured how different can it be? Because a black coal liner is exactly what you need. It needs to be soft enough that you can smudge it, but it needs to be a pencil. Now you can use a liquid liner for this look. The only thing I would say is if it's, if you're not good with a liquid liner, I wouldn't suggest it because you want the line to be smudgy and not too big. If it's really big, then it competes with the red lip. That's the issue. If you know how to do a really thin line and you can do a wing and you don't have a problem with that, hey, first of all, my hat's off to you because it took me years to get that down and I'm still not great at it. It's just not something that I do often. It's but like with anything, more practice you get, the better you get at it. I don't do it a lot. So when I was younger, I did it a lot more and I was a lot better at it. So if you want to use a liquid liner, that's fine. But again, remember the whole point of this is the red lip. Take it and you're going to put it on the outer corner of the eye. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Draw it all the way across. I don't usually say draw it all the way across, by the way. Usually I, for most people, I would be like, you just use the outer corner of your eye. But for this look, this is what we're trying to do. All right, now you can use, a lot of pencils have the end of a brush you can smudge. You can use a Q-tip. I am gonna use the new Sonia G brush because I have the brush and why not? This is a smudger brush and I'm doing exactly that. I'm just smudging it. Now, everybody's different about what they can have really close to their eye like this. If you have really sensitive eyes, I, and I understand that, just be careful what kind of brush you're using when you go to smudge it. All right, so the next thing I would say is, all right, where do you want, where do you want the flick to be? If you want the flick to be like in line with your eyebrow, just draw it, draw the outside line. If you want it to be more like this and go out towards your hair, you can do it that way. Again, it has to do with, has to do with how you want it to look, what looks good on you. I have a tendency to draw my flick like in line with the outside of my eye and my nose. So like, like here, which is a little past where my brow is. So I'll draw it just like that, just a little line, a little line. I'm just drawing it. It's not like I'm doing anything interesting here. And sometimes I have to pull on the skin just a little because I'm older and the, skin, and the skin's not super taut, but that's it. It's just a little line there because we're gonna smudge it. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect anyway, but if you're smudging it, it definitely doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so then take the black liner, do the exact same thing on the top line as we did on the bottom. Try not to pull your eye. Now you can tight line if that's something you like to do. I can tight line on the outer corner of my eye, but I have trouble doing it on the inner corner. And then a little triangle, tiny little triangle. That's it. This is a good pencil, I like it so far. All right, so now I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna smudge it off. All right, that's it. That's the smudged eye. Okay, look is almost done. Now to the really important part, like it's all important, but you can see how this all comes together though, because the look on the eyes is very matte. It's very subdued. It, it comes in with the rest of the shades of, on my face. There's nothing that really stands out except the black lashes and the smoky eye, and then now the red lip. Now, I would say two things. One, make sure your pencil is really sharp and go in with a shade. You can match the red lipstick if you wanna do that. I tend to try to find a lip liner that's a little bit nude, but a little bit of pink to it. This is Rose Natural by Chanel. And I put it on its side. When I line, I go a little, I go a little outside of my lip line. And if you notice, I have some of my lip already filled in. So I don't make it a tight line. I don't make it a thin line. I make it a thick line. That's why it's on its side. So that when the lipstick goes on, it blends instead of having just a line and then red. Now on the bottom lip, my bottom lip, most people's, is a little bit bigger than my top lip. So I don't do the same thing on my bottom lip. Again, this has to do with preference and how you like your lips to look. I go a little bit in the line. But again, making the line a little bit thicker. Now, 
If I wanted to have a real monochromatic look, what you would say like a, a Kim Kardashian look when she was doing the whole monochromatic thing, you could actually take a very subdued lipstick that looks like the malt eyeshadow and put it on your lips and that you would have that kind of monochromatic. I have done that from time to time and I, I love that look. But I do think that this look particularly was supposed to be about doing something. You're going to, like you're at work, and what you have in your bag is, like I said, you got a red lipstick, you got a basic eyeshadow, you got a black liner, you got some mascara, and you're maybe wearing foundation. And so that's the kind of thing, like how do you make something look elegant out of something pretty simple, pretty basic collection? And I promise you, this will look great with pretty much anybody with anything. You just have to make sure that, again, the eyeshadow is not too much different than your skin color. The liner is deep. It doesn't even have to be black. It could be a deep brown if that's what you want. But you're, again, it's you're trying to keep it just a focus on wow, black lashes and smoky liner and then the red lip. All right, so now I'm gonna use the Chanel. This is the brand new Chanel. This is the Velvet, I, I forget the full name, Rouge Allure Velvets, but it's Nui, what is it, Nui? I can never remember these stupid names. They always have these different names for these things. <laughs> they're luminous matte lip colors. They're velvets, but they're, I can't remember anyway. The point is this shade is brand new to me. It's 0000 and I have not used it on film yet. So hopefully it will work because it might not be the right red, but I think it should work. So. We're about to find out. I always start on the outside of the lip and then I can fill in the inside. I'm pressing it into the outside and dragging it. This formula is really good, <laughs> I have to say. I do, I really do like the formula by Chanel. It's, they did a good job. And if you're wondering why I'm being so careful, it's because I, seriously, I have issues with red. I just, I don't know how I do it, but I managed to get it everywhere. So we're just gonna go slow. Okay, now that we've got like the base on like that, now what I'm gonna do is rub my lips together for a second, carefully. If you really want your lipsticks to stay and you feel like you have very oily skin or very oily lips, you can blot this with a paper towel, not paper towel, tissue. Then take powder, powder them, blot, and go back over with a lipstick. I don't need to do that. My lips are dry enough as it is. All you need is some bold jewelry. Now your jewelry doesn't have to be as bold as mine. Something that draws attention again to the lips and you're ready to go. This is, there's not, again, not a lot of color, not a lot of, it, it, I went really slowly so you could see all the steps, but if you were doing this, it doesn't take that long to do. The thing that takes the longest to do, frankly, is the mascara because mascara just takes a while to do and your brows, depending on how much you have to draw out. There's bronzer, so there's primer, foundation, bronzer, eyebrows, a matte shade that is a half to maybe a shade deeper than your skin tone, Black liner, mascara, lip liner, lipstick. This was my go-to look for going out for the longest time. And today it still is. I actually get probably the most compliments when I have more simplistic makeup like this. When I have a smoky eye with not a lot of shadow, um, not a lot of colorful shadow anyway, this type of, you know, almost just a little bit deeper than my skin tone and a red lip. And I, I can't tell you exactly why because don't really love a red lip. I tend to, to do neutrals and like rosewoods and pinky nudes and that type of thing. But when I wear a red lip and a smoky eye, but a simplified smoky eye like this one, that's when it's, it's, it's odd to me, but I will say that is when I get the most compliments. So that is the final look. Certainly a look that makes me feel confident and pulled together. I'd love to hear what yours is and what kind of look you put together when you feel like you don't have a lot of time or don't have a lot of options or don't have a lot of makeup. Because we've all been in those situations. And what your look is like when you're trying to do something that's simple, 
quick, but also sophisticated and elegant. Because I'd love to hear different ones because there's so many different ways to play with makeup, which is the great thing. So thank you so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you in another video really soon. Bye. Thank you.